Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new unboxing video for you on the Peter Rosenti designed Spiderco Paisan. In front of us, you're going to actually see the Peter Rosenti Nirvana. This was the knife that started it all, quite literally. The Spiderco Nirvana was the very first YouTube video that I ever made. It's the first video on the Dr. Frunky channel. You can go back and see how terrible I was at reviewing knives at that point. I knew very little, but I knew that Peter Rosenti knew how to make a very special knife. He specializes in making integral locks, integral handles like this, uh, where it's one piece of solid titanium. This is a full custom Nirvana. It's been featured on my channel for quite some time, and it is one of the absolute treasures of my collection. I adore its simplicity, but also its technical expertise and the way that it's executed is brilliant. Now, way back in 2015, which is when the Spyderco Nirvana was released, there was a bit of disappointment in that knife. Uh, I will say that the general consensus on the Nirvana was a little bit of disappointment, but a knife with a ton of potential. They executed the handle very well. It was beautiful. They did this awesome laser uh, stuff that they had to do this 3D machining with. Really cool technology that went into that knife. Now they've come out with the next generation of the Peter Rosenti, the Paisan. I'm going to go ahead and open this up, but I wanted to show you this has Peter Rosenti's signature on it. I was lucky enough to be able to purchase them this directly from him, thanks to the generous support of my Patreon patrons. Uh, if you want to go and learn more, you can go to patreon.com slash drfrunky. This knife is going to be given away to one of those patrons that helped me to get this. Uh, I can expl You can see more about that on that page. So I'll move the case to the side, but here we have the Spyderco Paisan. This has been a long time coming. Ever since the Nirvana came out, we kind of knew that they were going to do another Peter Rosenti knife. And I'm not even sure, maybe it was 2016 when we learned about when this, that what this knife was. And we've seen it at various stages at different shows and things like that. And so it's great that it's finally here. And so we're going to see what it's all about. This is just going to be that unboxing and initial impressions on this knife. I will carry it for a while, learn a little bit about it, and then give you a final diagnosis later on. But as you can see, this is a full-size knife, and it stays right in tune with Peter Rosenti's custom work. What I love about Peter's work are his simple yet subtle and elegant finishes. If you get really close, you can see that these have fine detailing. This custom has a mirror-washed finish and a beautiful media blasted and treated handle. This knife is coming in with very similar finishes, mirror wash blade and a blasted and treated handle. Very amazing that they've been able to capture, and in my opinion, the very most essence of Peter Rosenti's knives. This is, absolutely they've captured it in this knife. I would say that this goes a level beyond the Nirvana in capturing his essence. The Nirvana had the design on the handle. I will say he never really had a design that looked exactly like that. It had that acid washed blade, which I don't think is the best expression of his work. This really captures my love of his knives, and so I was super excited to get this in hand. I've been rambling on for almost four minutes before even getting to talk about this knife. Please understand that's how much anticipation there has been about the Paisan. We've been talking about it for years and here it finally is. So let's go ahead and get some vital signs on this guy. Up front we have a huge blade. You're looking at four inches of S90V steel. That is coming in right at four full inches of steel right there with about 3.8 inches of overall cutting length, a very nice blade to handle ratio. You're coming in at about 8.9 inches of overall length and your handle is coming in at just under uh, five inches, maybe 4.9 inches. So a very nice blade to handle ratio, which is the benefit of this integral design. Uh, I really, really like that. Uh, let's go ahead and pull out the calipers here. We'll get some dimensions here. The blade stock is going to be coming in at 162 thousandths, so rather thick, even thicker than uh, the typical blade stock. The handle quite thin here, coming in at 0.479, so under 48, 0.48 inches right there. So very, very thin. 
Uh, this is a full integral handled construction. Sometimes that adds a little bit of weight, but it is still titanium, so it's not going to really break your belt at 4.41 ounces. That gets fairly close to the one-to-one -one ratio, four inches to 4.4 ounces. I'll say that's pretty impressive for a knife of this size. Under five ounces is easily carryable for me in scrubs, and certainly if you wear uh, jeans or any sort of substantial pants, uh, it's no problem whatsoever. So let's bring out another couple of knives for a size comparison, and this is where we're going to have a little bit of fun. Spyderco is probably my current favorite production knife company for various reasons, but it has been their consistent commitment to making excellent tools with excellent designs out of excellent materials. So here we have the evol evolved Paras right here, the Para 2 and the Para 3. You can see that the uh, Paisan is even bigger than the Paramilitary 2, so I'll go ahead and get the 3 out of the way. I want to bring out another couple of recent knives. I think this is an important comparison right here. Here is the Spyderco Drunken. This is another one of their latest knives. I just released my unboxing video on this knife, and it is very, very nice. I think that Spyderco, in doing these two knives, has really stepped their game up to a brand new level, and I am deeply, deeply impressed with what they're doing. Now, it should be noted that both of these knives come from the Tai Chung Taiwan factory. Tai Chung has been doing some extremely impressive work lately. If you'll remember, recently I reviewed this knife. This is the Spider Co. Subvert, the collaboration with Nadia Moore and Black Snow Customs. So, with these three knives this year, I've really seen Spider Co. kick it up to 11. These knives are brilliant designs that are brilliantly executed and really deserve your attention. Yes, they're more expensive than a paramilitary, but you have to stop thinking about Spyderco as a budget brand and recognize what they're trying to do here. They are making elite knives for elite collectors and they are doing a damn good job. So good work Spyderco. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on so you can see how big this uh, full-size Paisan is. I really like the size on this. I've always enjoyed the size on the Peter Rosenti knives because they're very slim for how big they are and they carry much smaller than they really are. So let's go ahead and take a look at this knife and break it down anatomically by looking at the blade first. Just like with the Drunken, they have pulled off another beautiful S90V blade with a mirror-washed finish. This one is done in a sheep's foot style grind. This is the classic Paisan grind. Um, I don't think I mentioned that the name Paisan actually translates to farmer in French. I may be saying it completely wrong. Forgive me, my French colleagues, for not knowing how to pronounce it well. The knife itself, though, is a very elegant knife. And you can see that if you go back to their uh, materials right here, it's just sort of reminding me that they in included this amazing stuff with their knife. Talks about Peter Rosenti, talks about the knife and all of the uh, impressive features that it has. That's always nice to see. But this blade is done in mirror-washed S90V. That is an impressive feat in, in and of itself. One time I wanted to order, actually with this, one of these knives, I wanted to order a knife from Peter Rosenti, and I said, Peter, I know you work with S90V, I know you work with CPM 154, can you do a mirror-washed S90V? And he said, that is a nightmare, absolutely not. And, and so to see a production knife company doing this with S90V is really impressive. This is the knife that you can't get from Peter because it's such a pain to do this. And so you really have to give credit where credit is due and understand why this knife costs what it costs. We'll get to that towards the end. Mirror washing this knife is extremely difficult. They did it on the Drunken, but they've achieved a beautiful finish. It truly is reflective. Put my hand right here. You can see my fingers moving here. You can see out the window over there. You can see the phone. You can see my face. There is an actual polish to this knife, and it is super nice. They've then done a very heavy stone washing over it. It's a bit heavier than the custom model, but what this does, it's going to hide wear. A pure, a pure mirror polish is going to show wear immediately. This has been knocked down, and it's just going to maintain that luster but then not show wear so terribly. It also has an extremely smooth surface, <clears throat> which I have found 
really aids in cutting tasks. Having a very smoothly bladed knife is a very, very nice thing to have indeed for your cutting tasks. <clears throat> I'm going to wipe these off. What this does provide, though, is a surface for fingerprints. It is a fingerprint magnet for sure. I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off for the remainder of the video so you have something nice to look at. Uh, the blade came very sharp. I will say behind the edge, it's about 0.034 inches, which is disappointingly thick. And that's because they've decided to do a flat grind to about halfway up the blade here. Um, the custom model, if you'll recall from my other video where I did a, a custom video, uh, a video on a custom Paisan, uh, I'll leave a link to that down below. That knife is actually a hollow ground. When Peter makes this knife, he hollow grinds this knife. And so it comes to a very thin area behind the edge. In choosing to make this flat ground, just as they did with the Nirvana, they've created a knife that is a little bit thick behind the edge. And I'm going to get a bunch of people yelling and screaming about that. However, they have sharpened the knife, and you can tell that it's rather thick behind the edge because the edge bevel is rather tall. That's probably coming in somewhere around Spyderco's traditional 15 degrees per side on their edges. Uh, maybe 20. If it's 20 and the edge bevel is that big, I'll be really disappointed. But uh, as you can see, they have sharpened it and it does slice. It cuts pretty well. With a thick blade stock and a thick grind like this, you have to understand what you're purchasing. This is going to work fine for most of your EDC cutting tasks. It really and truly will. It may not be ideal for some of the finest and sliciest of needs, but for the vast majority of any of your EDC needs, it's going to be just fine. One thing that this mirror wash does provide is a nice, smooth, spidey hole. One of the problems at the Tai Chung factory is that they make sharp, spidey holes. This one has been knocked down nicely by its tumbling and its processing. It also has added to the edges around the blade as well as the jimping. Everything is so smooth, so well-rounded. It's extremely nice. I will mention the jimping here is also quite impressive. It's not just straight jimping. It's been uh, contoured a bit. You can see that the edges have been rounded. I don't want to call it a crowned spine, but it is fairly similar in its overall effect and what you feel on here. So it's it's sort of rounded over the top and then you have the jimp, jimps. And so uh, it's not a full true crowning effect, but it's quite nice in the way that it looks and the way it feels. Another nice touch on this blade. Moving back to the pivot. This is also equally impressive. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and combine this with a takedown video. The thing I love about integral knives is that they are so simple to take apart. So this has a T10 screw right here. Some of you guys are going to be freaking out. This is an expensive knife. What I'm going to recommend is that as you unscrew this side, you push the pivot in. Go ahead and open this up. Push the pivot. And it will uh, come out. This is going to extend this video unnecessarily, but I wanted to show you guys what's going on here. If I disengage the lock, it'll work probably. <clears throat> this is why you don't combine these types of videos. But I do want to show you guys how simple this is. It really is just this one piece. It's a There it goes. And once it pushes out, it's very easy. That's what these tolerances are like. It's super impressive. If you just unscrew this the rest of the way now, this will come out. You can manipulate the pivot the rest of the way out of the knife here just like that very easy and then the knife just slides apart the reason i wanted to show you this was because it has the new and upgraded bearings as seen on the subvert which you saw earlier in the video these are new uh pivot bearings that spider co is featuring i wanted to show them to you because they're just very nice it is a different type of phosphor bronze casing uh, these are steel ball bearings, but they're just very nice. They feel very quality. These washers are a little bit thicker than the ones that we see traditionally. And uh, I just wanted to show you that. Something else that I also noticed when I just uh, deconstructed the knife is that the pivot here is keyed. You can see that it's flat on one side there. And the actual frame, the frame hole, is keyed so that the pivot can only be inserted in one direction. So that helps in a number of ways. Not only can the pivot not rotate, but it keeps the same contact surfaces in contact with the blade. And so it creates a consistent grooving along the pivot that will smooth out much faster. Pivots that freely spin, you're constantly having to repolish your track around the pivot. I just like that very much. And so here I'm going to show you 
that it's rather easy to put back together. We're gonna just get this all right over here, slap these together. Now, this knife came with a substantial amount of oil in the pivot, too much oil from the factory, substantially too much oil. Uh, and so a good clean out, I would strongly recommend for all new buyers. Here, we're gonna just put this pivot in the keyed position. Pray that it works. There we go. Disengage the lock. Slide that blade into place and in the pivot goes. Very, very easy. Push it through all the way. There we go. Flush on the other side now. And then you just put your screws in. These are T10 titanium screws. Uh, they're, they're blasted to match the finish of the handle and I think they look quite nice, these little three-pronged screws. This knife is very sensitive to the tightness of these screws with regards to blade centering. So I'll show you that in just a second. You really wanna tighten these screws down all the way. So I'm gonna disengage the lock here. They really do tighten down quite a bit. And as I bring the knife closed, you're gonna see it's just slightly off center and that can be solved by making sure these are fully tightened down. Good, there it is, dead on center. Action is good. Very nice. And it's just that easy to deconstruct and put this knife back together. In a couple of minutes, in the middle of a video, on just sort of spontaneously, I was able to uh, take this knife apart and put it back together. Certainly if you wanna lube it up and do what you want, that's fine. I have found uh, over the course of my research with knives that leaving these ball bearing pivots relatively non-lubricated is probably the best. And so I've actually cut way back on my usage of pivot lube because of the physics of the contact surfaces uh, going on here. They sort of self-lubricate. And so it's probably better to just leave it alone. Uh, but the pivot is very smooth. I love those ball bearings. They're very, very nice, and they're breaking in extremely nicely. As you can see, I've had this knife only for a couple of days now, and it is incredible how smooth it was straight out of the box. And, you know, you just saw me. I just randomly put this together. I didn't really fine-tune this in any way, and here it is returned back to a very nice action. Uh, so let's go ahead and move back to the most impressive part of this knife, and that is the handle. This is, as I mentioned, an integral piece of titanium, one piece of solid titanium with an included frame lock. We've seen this more and more throughout the knife industry. We Knives has been doing it, Riot Knives have, has been doing it, and a number of other companies have been excelling at making integral handled knives. However, most of those knives tend to be rather chunky, rather big. Uh, the new Wii knives, I had the Arrakis on here recently. The Pleroma are a little bit thinner, but they're still kind of wide knives. This, however, and the Nirvana are very slim, and I really like the way that they've done this. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. If you're watching this video, you're going to want to know about the action on this knife and how the frame lock works. And that's because on the Nirvana, the action was not excellent. Some of the knives were very stiff. Some of the knives were gritty. And then there was the infamous lock stick. There was so much lock stick on some Nirvanas that you had to pry the thing open. And some of them were just so badly done that you just couldn't own the knife. And it was really disappointing. I think that was the Achilles heel of the original Nirvana. In order to remedy that, uh, Spyderco have included a steel lock bar insert this time around. However, that being said, it is still not completely free of lockstick. There is what I would actually call Shiro stick. If you are familiar with the feeling of a Shirogorov lockup uh, in a frame lock, you'll know that the Shirogorov lock does not necessarily immediately engage with no sound. Sometimes it makes a little pop. That's not what I would call friction, but rather not what I would call stick, but rather friction that represents solid lockup. I've spoken to some knife makers and they say if you have a little bit of that, it can mean that your lockup geometry is actually very good. What I've noticed about both the Pison and the Drunken that also features a steel lock bar insert is that they both have that very small amount of what I have been referring to for some time as Shiro stick because Shirogorovs have it and these knives have it. This is not lock stick. This is not lock stick. Lock stick is titanium on steel where you cannot open that knife, where there is an actual hindrance 
to opening the knife. If you disengage this lock and you feel it or hear it disengage, it's not necessarily a negative thing. It may actually be that they've improved their lock geometries to the point where now it has that positive friction. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like there's excellent lockup. I've tested this. It's early lockup, looking at about 25 to 30% maybe on that lockup. Solid, solid. Very, very nice. Uh, there are people that are complaining about lock stick. There may be lock stick on this model. If you have it, leave a comment down below. Let's talk about it. I don't believe that mine has it, and I believe that this Shiro stick sensation is fading with every flip that I do. I've done maybe 200 flips of this knife. Probably by the time I get to 500 or 1,000, it'll be completely gone. At about 50, it was still there. At 100, it was better. At 200 now, it's much better. Uh, so it's quite uh, a nice feeling, if I'm honest, with the way that I understand pocket knives. Let's talk about the rest of the finish work here. Look at how they've done the finish. They've matched very well the custom look of his knives. Beautifully finished, no sharp angles. Some One of the problems with the Nirvana is that some of the spots on the knife were a bit sharp. These have all been tumbled and knocked down. Nothing is sharp. Nothing is pokey. None of this is pokey. None of this even looks sharp. The Nirvana had some spots that were quite sharp. Again, this has none. Uh, let's talk about the pocket clip. This one comes with the standard Spyderco spoon style pocket clip. It features a mirror stone wash to match the finish of the blade. In my opinion, I love it. I love the Spyderco clip. It works. It just works. Nothing is more annoying than getting a great knife with a bad pocket clip, Spyderco drunken. They put another clip on this and it was very bad. And so I'm very happy to see that they put this on here. If you don't like this clip, get a custom clip. They use the regular Spyderco three hole pattern. Now you can use any kind of custom clip. Uh, I just have to happen to have one sitting right here. So just imagine this knife with a nice blue deep carry pocket clip and there you go, you can use it. So, uh, I think I've talked about pretty much everything I need to talk about. 22 minutes into this video, quite a long one on this one, guys. But that's how excited I was about this knife. I'm really impressed. Oh, oh we got to talk about we got to talk about something else. We got to talk about the detent. We're too, oh, we're 22 minutes in, and I didn't even talk about the detent, guys. The detent is too light. Okay, I did notice that right off the bat. This video would be remiss not to mention this detent problem. A lot of you are going to get this knife, and you're going to say that the detent is too light. I agree with you. However, I don't think that it's a problem necessarily. So what I mean to say is if I shake this knife like this, it's not going to open. If I give it a solid throw towards the ground, it's going to open. The knife just does that. The detent is not very strong. And so I can throw the knife out and open it. I could even more easily do that with the Spyderco Subvert. This knife is actually significantly easier to do that with. What I noticed when I deconstructed the knife, and I didn't show you this when I did it, perhaps you could go back and check it out, is that the detent hole is too small in the blade. Spyderco, if you're watching this, you need to do CQI on this knife. You need to make a bigger detent hole. It's deep enough, it's just not big enough. The detent ball is too big for a very small hole and it's not engaging it fully. And so, when you, as you can hear, it's a rather muddy sound. It's not crispy. Let me show you a knife that's got a very crisp detent. Here is the Robert Carter and Frank Fisher Talon. Incredibly crispy detent. It's got that nice metal on metal ting sound because the lock bar is touching there. And the, this one doesn't have it. It doesn't have that sound. It's not the same. They need to fix that. I do not think it is a deal breaker and I'm going to tell you why. This knife needs to is to be carried in this orientation. Tip up in the pocket just like this. Try to shake this knife in any kind of a way outside of getting in a car accident and rolling over. Regular walking and motions are not going to make this blade come out of this handle. I'm giving it some pretty good motions here and it's not doing anything. And that's a great exaggeration of what you're doing in your pocket. Add to that, if it's in your pocket, this is up against the back of your pocket anyways. And so it's not going to open. 
I don't think that it's a safety issue. For people that are worried that the detent is so terrible, I'm shaking this and it's not coming out. It, 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 I think that there may be some variability. Peter said that his had actually a very crispy detent. This one is rather soft. I think that the detent hole is too small and they need to make it bigger. If they're going to do more of these, make the detent hole bigger. Sal, Eric, somebody listen to me. Peter, I know that you know how to fix that. Maybe I'll see if I can figure that out. Anyways, guys, this knife is extremely impressive. Even with the detent being a little bit light, it's an extremely impressive knife. This fixes all of the problems that the Nirvana had, including the lock stick, including the bad blade finish, including just, well, it's still a little bit thick behind the edge. It still has that. That is still a thing. I do wish it had been hollow ground. It'll be interesting to see if anybody goes and does any razor edge knives regrinds on this one. I would go for a hollow grind in a second. I bet he would do a great job of that. Anyways, very great knife. I'm extremely impressed. The quality is there. The beauty is there. The essence of the Peter Rosenti Paisan is there. This is a better representation, in my opinion, of Peter's work than the actual than the Spyderco Nirvana was. Some of Peter's knives even have a little bit of light detent, and so it's not necessarily that misrepresentative of the actual knife uh, that it's trying to represent. Now, let's talk about the price. Geez, we're 26 minutes into this. This is a special, uh, huge video for you guys. $525. $525 to buy the Spyderco Bison. Is it worth it? Absolutely, it's worth it. I can say that without a hesitation. Is the Spyderco Drunken worth $410? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question, actually. Because the difference is this. The Spyderco is $525, but the custom version of this knife is going to cost you at minimum $1,400. And this knife is 98% of the custom version. The Spyderco Nirvana was maybe 85%. 80% of the custom. This is 98% of the custom. I think that it's really, really, really good. It's that good. The, the Drunken doesn't really have a, another knife to put next to it. I would say that to get a Sinkovich, you're going to be paying even more. You'll probably pay $2,000 to get a custom Sinkovich, maybe even more than that. So you have to think about these knives in those kinds of relative terms because that's what they're shooting for. These are not like production... These are different than Spyderco's regular production knives. You cannot put a Paramilitary 2 and the Drunken on the table and say that they are the same, even though these kind of look the same because of my aftermarket mods. They're not even remotely the same in their execution and in their mission. This knife and the Drunken represent a new era in Spyderco knife making, and I love it. I really would like to see them continue to step into this arena to continue to maximize their potential on the high-end knives and for people to start taking a look at them. So if you are look, if you pre-ordered a Paisan, I hope that you like it. Don't be disappointed in the detent. Be happy that you have as close to a custom Resenti as you can get for a third of the price. It is a really, really nicely done knife. I think it's great, and I think it's going to be really successful, and I'm really happy to have this in my hands. Again, thank you to my Patreon patrons. One of you lucky guys is going to get this knife after I review it, uh, carry it and review it for a while. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, you can go over to patreon.com slash drfrunky. You can uh, enter in, and then you may be a candidate to win one of the knives featured on this channel. The Subvert is another knife that will be going to one of my very lucky uh, patrons. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Follow me on Instagram as Dr. Frunky. Follow Peter Rosenti at Rosenti Knives. Uh, uh, Peter Rosenti Knives or at Rosenti Knives on uh, Instagram. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying, take care.